when there is energy work done, it's quick. And the physical body, it takes longer to integrate because we have like 70 trillion, I don't know, 50 to 70 trillion plus cells within our body. I always will say, look at it as like water. When water boils, it evaporates into thin air and you just no longer see it, right? Now it's water and no longer visible. That's energy. And yet when you decrease the temperature, all these molecules start losing the energy, they start slowing down, they become harder, and these hard object that becomes ice, right? It's like us, dense, dense. We are like ice. So this is how I always explain to those that do ener energy work is that if you notice the energy might shift real quick, your body is going to need some time to uh, integrate with that sometimes. Sometimes it's just as fast, depending, right, how deep it is. Welcome to the Life is a Healing Journey podcast by yours truly, Anushka, with a C. This podcast explores how you can create a true healthy lifestyle and live your life to the fullest in the face of any circumstance by healing and balancing your mind, body, spirit. If you are someone that's been dealing with disharmony in any area of your life and you are committed to seeking harmony, this podcast is for you. Let's start healing. Today's podcast is focused on the spirit piece of mind, body, spirit. Frequency and energy go hand in hand. And as I've already said in previous spirit episodes, we are energy. Also, according to Nikola Tesla, energy is the life force that flows through all the things, including us, of course. It is the source of our power and the key to creating anything we truly desire. Frequency is the rate at which energy vibrates, which is measured in hertz. So you'll see music, all of it, right? It's hertz. And vibration is the amplitude or intensity of energy. So the higher the frequency, the higher its energy. And the higher the vibration, the more powerful the vibration. Your thoughts create your emotions and your emotions emit a frequency that's either high vibing or low vibing. And the higher the frequency, the more powerful they are and the bigger they are as well when it is on the outside of us, the aura, right? It's going to be bigger than a low frequency vibration. Love, as I've already mentioned, vibrates at 528 hertz, while fear vibrates at a frequency of 100 hertz. It's a massive difference. So when we focus on our thoughts and emotions that vibrate at a higher frequency, we then raise our vibration and attract more of the same into our lives. And the same goes with a lower vibration. You experience that which you vibrate at. It's always a match. Like attracts like. So then if you really look at it that way, you get to be in, in charge of your life to really see where you are vibrating and what your frequency is. Now, I've already mentioned David R. Hawkins, who wrote the book, Letting Go, The Pathway to Surrender. And that's where I got the frequency chart from. He, but he also wrote a book before that called Power Versus Force. And this is where he really goes into depth about energy, frequency, vibration, and all of it, really explaining every single piece to have you get the clarity around it. And he explains that there is a scale of human consciousness, and it's the levels of consciousness as well, another term for it, ranging from zero to a thousand. There are 17 levels that he describes, and he goes into detail about these. You can, of course, search wherever online and you'll see the different levels. What I love about this book is he really goes into detail to really have you see 
where each of them, first of all, where they are on the scale, which you can find, but really goes into the description of each. And so this is where I've created the chart because it allows people to really pinpoint and see where am I falling right now, right? Just to really have a little more awareness around your frequency. Now I'm going to start off with the lowest, the lowest being shame at 20 hertz. And this is barely, as he describes, as David R. Hawkins describes it, it's barely above death, humiliation, banishment, destructive to health, cruelty towards others and self. It's like he describes hanging your head in shame. And then we have guilt at 30, where Hawkins describes as punish and be punished, self-rejection, masochism, remorse, feeling bad, self-sabotage, suicidal behavior, accident proneness, projection of self-hatred onto others, evil behavior, and even it's the basis of many psychosomatic illnesses. It's the, it's like the saying of, it's not my fault, yet taking it out on others. So a lot of deflection, right? And projection. So there's a lot of that when it comes to the guilt frequency. But next we have apathy which is 50. So we're going up that ladder. And apathy is hopelessness, playing dead, being a drain to others, being immobilized. Poverty is common here. It's this. It's like having the thought of, I can't, who cares, just being blah, right? And he even describes this as, think of Eeyore from Winnie the Pooh. If you think of Eeyore, isn't he just like, da, 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 whatever, right? That is apathy. Next, we have grief at 75. And this here is beyond just what we know as grief. It's actually also where that's depression, of course, sadness. There's also separation, helplessness, despair, loss, regret, feeling like you're a, a loser, being a loser, or feeling like you're a loser. And what goes in the background goes on in the rack background is if only I had, I can't go on. And that's what the subconscious goes through. And then we have fear at a hundred. This sees danger everywhere. It's like that worry, everything is out to get you type of frequency, possessive of others, jealousy, restless, being restless, anxious, avoidance, defensiveness, and being preoccupied with just always needing to feel secure, the security. And next, surprising, this actually really surprised me, was desire at 125. And I didn't realize desire was part of the lower frequencies. And it's because it's all, it's about always seeking gain acquisition, pleasure, and getting something outside of yourself. It's like needing something outside of you that's external to you, right? Rather than coming from here, from home, from yourself. So it's like never being satisfied, craving. I have to have it. Give me what I want. Give it to me now. And it's never good enough. All of this is actually the desire frequency. And then we have anger. Now, this is interesting too, because I was surprised to see that anger is above desire, right? I always knew anger and sadness, well, grief, right? I always knew that they go hand in hand, but never really saw that anger is above desire. So I guess it's a higher frequency to be angry. And I can see why now, because you, when you're angry, you express yourself more. Many times people that hold in their anger, may sh it may show up as sadness, right? Rather than when you're angry, there's more opportunity, more chances that you're going to actually express it. Now, some people do hold it in because they repress it, right? And they have no awareness that that's what's happening. But those that are actually aware of their anger will express it and let it out. So there, it's a little bit better. So it is better to be angry than to have this desire. So allow yourself to feel the feelings when you feel this anger, which is at 150. And this is described as force, threats, attacks, getting even, irritable, explosive, 
being bitter, resentful. It's like, I'll show you. Okay, wanting to really get that revenge in a sense. And then we move up to pride at 175, which is achievement, desire for recognition, better than, specialness, superior, perfectionism. It's like, my way is the best way. I'm better than you. I know best. A lot of the know-it-alls fall under this category. Like, I know better than you. And then they're closed off and not open to learning other things, right? So this is at the level of pride. And so next, Hawkins explains that courage is the middle marker. And it's what shifts the from low frequency to the high frequencies. It's really like going up that ladder and then courage is right in that middle. So it's like really shifting right at courage. And of course it makes sense because doesn't it take courage to get out of fear and into action? It's like empowerment at its finest, really right? Because it really does take courage to take action in the face of your fears. And so courage really is what has you go into the higher frequencies. It's the first level up that frequency ladder from that going from the dark, contracted, the force, energy, destructive, low and negative frequency up to that light, expansive power creativity, high and positive frequency and vibrations. Courage is at 200 hertz. And Hawkins describes it as self-empowerment, excited about life, determined, independent, productive, effective, action is possible. So it's like now possibility is seen. Having the I can do it attitude, that's actually courage for you. And then we have neutrality at 250. And this is described as comfortable, pragmatic, relatively free of emotions, free of rigid positions, non-judgmental and non-competitive, being neutral. It's okay either way, being indifferent, right? So you're really neutral in this place. And this is a great place to be. Many times when I work with my clients, if not all the time, the point of Psyche is to get to a place of peace and non-attachment, which that non-attachment is just being neutral. You're not attached. And this is a really great place to be. Of course, peace will come down the road, which is a very higher frequency, one of the highest, right? So then follows willingness. Willingness is at 310 hertz. And this is described as positive attitude, welcomes all expressions of life, friendly, helpful, wants to assist, seeks to be of service. So there is some willingness there, willing to be that, right? So then when you're actually out there and willing to serve others, you're raising your frequency. One of the things I always guide clients and everyone to do when they feel that they're in a lower frequency, go do an act of kindness for someone else. Even if that means giving them a compliment, holding open the door, whatever that looks like, that will raise your vibe and will raise theirs too, which is awesome. Win-win, right? Next, we have acceptance, which is at 350. At acceptance, it's described as easygoing, being harmonious, inclusive, flexible, laid back, and free of inner resistance. It meets life on life's terms. There is no need to blame others or blame life. It's the taking that responsibility, accepting life as is. And in the background, it's life is good. You and I are good. I feel connected. That's being in acceptance. To follow that is reason. Reason is at 400. And this is described where it differentiates humans from the animal world. Ability to see things in the abstract. To really be able to conceptualize. To be objective. 
to make rapid and correct decisions. Its enormous ability is problem solving. So science, philosophy, medicine, logic, all of this is an expression of this level at reason. And then we have love. Love and on the scale is shown as 500. And really when they've looked into it deeper, it's actually 528 hertz. So a lot of times these might vary, right? It's not exactly, for instance, shame. It's not exactly 20. It could be anywhere from zero to 20 or zero to 29, right? And then guilt, could, it, it, it's not ever exact. So it might be some guilt and shame. A lot of times, for instance, guilt and shame go hand in hand, right? So if you look at it this way, it's similar. So love could be starting at 500, where we're going from reason to love. But really, it's that 528 hertz where it's been shown to be healing and scientifically proven that it heals DNA at a faster rate. Love is forgiving. It's nurturing, supportive, emanates from the heart, not the mind, from the heart, right? Focuses on the essence of the situation, not the details. And it's the perception is replaced with vision. So it's really seeing things from where it's at. It takes no position and sees the true value of the lovability that exists all around. Coming from a place of love, there's no judgment. That's huge. I always say whenever there's judgment present, love is missing. So whenever there is some judgment that you have, just know there is no love. And if you begin to look at it that way, and as soon as you recognize it, you choose something out of love or start thinking about someone that you love or whatever it is, is looking at it from it, the eyes of love, you'll raise your vibration immediately and really get connected to that. Another great one that I always recommend for raising your vibe is having, which is the next one, having a gratitude list. Joy and gratitude are about the same. They're actually about the same frequency at 540. I'm sure, again, these vary on different areas, and that's just part of it, right? So it's never exact, exact. 528 hertz for love is the one I know. The other ones, I'm, I'm sure there's varied frequencies, and it's at 540. And this is love that is unconditional and unchanging despite circumstances and actions of others. So this is joy and gratitude are actually above love. The world is illuminated by this exquisite beauty and it's seen in all the things. It's the perfection of creation is actually self-evident. There is closeness to unity, being one, and the discovery of self, compassion for all, enormous patience, feelings of oneness with others, and concern for others' happiness. And instead of concern, because I don't care for that word, I would say just having compassion for others' happiness and wanting that for others. That is joy and gratitude. So at any point in life where you do begin to feel that low energy, stressed out, whatever that is, one of the best things you can do is write a gratitude list. Start writing all the things that you're grateful for in that moment. See what sparks your joy. Do something that sparks your joy. Which I'll talk more about. This is more, a lot of this is like more of the practice area to integrate with your life, right? So I'm actually sharing this in the video itself and in the podcast. But really just look at that, right? Look at things that you can do to get yourself out of the lower frequencies. Next, we have peace at 600. I love this because this is something. So I always, with clients, I'm always checking their frequency. I've mentioned this in previous episodes where I check to see where they're at at the very beginning. I do this on consultations too, just to see where they're at 
And I'm always aiming for love or above. Because like I mentioned, love frequency is healing. And of course, anything above that is healing as well. That puts your body in a state of peace. So the parasympathetic gets activated, right? Rather than being in that survival mode. So that's one of the main reasons why I do the frequency checking, beginning, middle, and end. And most of the time, not only do I see clients that go up to love, but most recently with since I've been working with uh, my clients and using Psyche as my modality, every time w- with Psyche, I see them jumping up to peace, which is actually one of the main things when it comes to Psyche is getting you to a place of peace and non-attachment. And so I absolutely love that that happens. And I always check in to see where each person is at and they truly, they feel the peace. They're like, oh yeah, I really feel light and very peace. Again, light, Right. That's high. When you're high vibing, when you're high frequency, you're going to feel light as as if like everything is just, you're like cloud nine. You're just on the clouds and you feel like a feather rather than when you're lower vibing. It just feels so dense and you get drained, right? It's completely different sensation, really. So peace at 600 is perfection, bliss, effortlessness. Oneness, a state of non-duality, beyond separateness, and beyond the intellect, illumination and enlightenment, rare in human realm. So peace, when you're at peace, it's more of, you're almost like superhuman. I mean, and enlightenment is truly that, right? That I feel like is the rare, like that to me is more what is rare in human realm. And it's because getting to that place of enlightenment takes a lot of work to get there. Self-work, of course. Now, there has been times where when I was at the hospital, I totally remember being in enlightenment. And that's when I had this whole vision. And it was just mind-blowing. And sometimes when I meditate, I just go back to that experience and memory just because how peaceful I was. It's like beyond peaceful. You just feel pure bliss. It truly is like pure bliss. And that's where, that's enlightenment. Enlightenment is 700 to 1,000. So that's a bigger range, right? So that's why it's really comes down to having it be zero to 1,000, where the range is that Hawkins describes, and then enlightenment being that high. And, And really, when you look at it in terms of, People, let's think about different world impactor, in, uh, world impactors like Mother Teresa and Hitler, right? So think about them on this scale of consciousness, human consciousness, right? When you check, people have actually mentioned when, when Mother T, when they've checked into the frequencies of and right what vibration they've been at, that shining light that Mother Teresa was, just who she was for others and for the world. That in itself was up there. That's enlightenment. Hey, so look at like, when you look at it like that, it's like that right there. I mean, of course, there are others, those that probably are meditating all the time will reach these levels of enlightenment. And it's a whole nother level. And a lot of them might stay there because they're not experiencing the human experiences that me and you do experience, right? They don't live in this 3D world as much as we do. So they are going to end up experiencing more of that enlightenment. That's just how it is. I choose to have the human experiences along with (laughs) the energetic ones and spiritual ones. So for me, I'm okay with having all the experiences of life, right? We learn that way. And everybody's got free will. So it's really your choice. Now, when you look at Hitler, right? We see Hitler and immediately, what do you think of? You think, oh my gosh, super dark energy, right? Dark. He was just so forceful and really evil, right? And so that has been shown that it falls under shame and guilt, right? So if you remember the descriptions, that's where he falls. And it makes total sense, right? 
So really think about it on your own. If you were to go to like a very excited, high vibing event, like Tony Brown's, for instance, or, you know, these kinds of events that are meant to hype you up, how do you feel? Even if, let's say you're tired and you go into this event, how do you end up feeling while you're there or even after? Most likely, you're going to feel energized. You're going to be excited. You're going to jump up and down and dance because that's what they do. That's the whole point. They play all this fun, loud, high-vibing music to get you in the uplifting, excited mode, right? And so you'll leave there energized. Or if you go around someone that's super bubbly and excited and whatnot, for the most part, most people are going to also get energized. Now, some people might get triggered, but that's something they have to work on because there's something there right there, right? Because typically when you go around someone that is high vibing, that in itself will raise your vibration as well. Now, think of the opposite side. Think of going to what I immediately think of is going to like some kind of political debate. Hey, I mean, just even the thought of it, my whole body contracts. And that in itself, it's like dense energy. It's draining. There's all this debating happening, right? And so that will drain you. Even if you were energized and you go to that, you're immediately afterwards going to want to take a nap. Or even imagine having conversation with a friend that's always down, always has something going on, is very victim-y, complains all the time, which is different from venting, by the way. You, there's one, one thing to vent, there's a whole nother thing to complain. Those that vent are doing so to get clarity and to release, which I'm always ear, open ears for. Now, those that complain, it's just a looping of that. It no longer is venting because it's the same thing over and over and over again. Might not even be with the same experience or the same person. It's like as if it's like the same story in multiple occasions multiple people, but this just continues to be their story. And they're very victim about it. And they just want your pity. And that's how it works. I actually had a client at one point where we worked on a lot of self-love. And one of the things that we ended up balancing with Psyche, which that's what it's called when you balance, it's like clearing, resetting the energy. And it was, I love myself unconditionally, independent of whatever that may have been. And when we did that, interestingly enough, it just wouldn't, sh it wouldn't shift for her. And so when that tends to happen, when someone backslides, because the subconscious mind was reprogrammed, and then she all of a sudden backslides, it's like, well, what's, what is she getting out of being a victim, really? Right. And so the more we unfolded it and dug deeper and dug deeper, we realized, and she actually came to this realization, thankfully herself, because that's the only way, honestly, anything truly works, because there's only so much I can ever say, and it would just one ear out the other. And that's why I don't give advice anymore. It's more, I ask questions for people to have their own self-discoveries. That's the only way it'll actually stick, right? And so I will never forget, though, one day she just said, you know what it is? I figured it out. I don't want to have that. I'm scared to have the self-love because I feel like if I have self-love, then I'm going to be alone because she was getting attention from other people when she was victim. She was getting love and attention and having this sensation of, oh, people care about me by being a victim. So of course, with that story, what's going to happen, right? You don't want to have self-love. You don't want to love yourself unconditionally because then you're like, I'm going to be all by myself. Well, we did a lot of work around that. So things shifted. <laughs> and it's just a matter of, again, layers. Life is a healing journey, right? So back to Hawkins, he also has said that the universe is energy, vibrational energy, and all energy vibrates, right? And so when you look at it this way, and you really see it as all matter is energy that has slowed down, by the way, right? So if all matter is energy that has slowed down enough so that we can see it, right? My here, this has energy and touch it. 
right? So anything that really occupies space, this laptop I'm on, me, you, anything that occupies space and has a mass that can be observed is energy that has slowed down enough so that we can actually see it. And so when you see it that way, everything is energy. And it's why energy, when, when we do energy work, when any, if you've ever done energy work, work, um, <laughs> I love my tongue twisters here. Uh, anytime that you've done any energy work, a lot of times like quick. And then what might happen is you'll feel tired, especially you do if you do a lot of energy work at once. And actually, I definitely don't recommend that. Because that will have your physical body to just need to just either to the point of you're just like passed out for like hours, or you might even end up getting sick if you don't really take that rest. I've seen that happen in fellow healers and whatnot, where they've just done too much and their body keeps not catching up. Right. I even had a session last, was it last week? Yeah. Last week with a client and Ooh, we went so deep. Things that she had zero awareness on. She also has, and going through, I should say had, because they've removed it and she's going through chemo and everything. She had a uh, glioblastoma tumor as well. And we're working through her rebirth and everything. And it's, I believe at this point, it was like 10 sessions in, which is really amazing because the amount that she's shifted and the amount of new things that have transpired has just been mind-blowing for both of us really and she came in saying that no i don't there's no anger or resentment i don't really i don't I had a wonderful life and everything is wonderful and then throughout our conversations all these new deep layers that she wasn't even aware of, uh, aware of started coming about and just last week I, we did this protocol where we actually get messages from the super conscious, which is anything you believe in, whether that's God, universe, spirit, source, inner knowing, energy, whatever it is you believe in, you get messages regarding either a medical condition or a situation. And so we did it around a situation being anger and resentment, because from what I've seen, anger and resentment is the source and I've had literally every person I've spoken with that's had some kind of cancer, they say anger and resentment is the source of cancer, suppressed or repressed anger and resentment, right? For her, it was repressed. The difference is, which I had to look at myself, suppression is you are consciously aware that you're angry or frustrated or sad and resentful, and you're consciously suppressing it. Repression is unconscious. You have no idea. A traumatic experience happens. And next thing you know, you're just like not even aware. And that gets repressed. So it just remains without even your awareness. It's completely unconscious. And so this is what happened with her. That I even said, oh, look at you. We've discovered so much in just the last few sessions. And you thought everything was so wonderful and great, right? Because even though... We may have little things that happen in life, like sand, right? Think of sand. If you imagine if you take like a cup or a bottle and fill this up with sand, it's going to still fill up all the way. It's just going to take a lot more sand grains versus rocks. It's going to take less rocks, but no matter what, it's going to get full. And so when it's that full over time, it's going to overfill because you can't contain that much, right? And then it shows up as a physical symptom. And so this is where we just were mind blown to see what actually happened. And when we did this session, she was exhausted because of how many things, how many layers deep we went. And she couldn't believe how much she slept, which I'm very happy about because that's so necessary when you're going through chemo and all the things for healing purposes. And so when there is energy work done, it's quick. And the physical body, it takes longer to integrate because we have like 70, 70 trillion, I don't know, 50 to 70 trillion plus cells within our body. 
I always will say, look at it as like water. When water boils, it evaporates into thin air and you just no longer see it, right? Now it's water and no longer visible. That's energy. And yet when you decrease the temperature, all these molecules start losing the energy, they start slowing down, they become harder, and these hard object that becomes ice, right? It's like us, dense, dense. We are like ice. So this is how I always explain to those that do energy work is that if you notice the energy might shift real quick, your body is going to need some time to uh, integrate with that sometimes. Sometimes it's just as fast, depending, right, how deep it is. So always take that into consideration. Energy, frequency, and vibration is all around us. And we, when we actually learn to use them and take advantage of this knowledge, we really can create anything we desire. And we can also look at it as if we are not able to manifest that which we're desiring, it could be that there's even something better out there for, from, uh, from the universe for us. So it's being open to that because we don't always know. Our imagination is our limit because there's so much beyond our imagination. So it's being open to beyond your imagination, what's in your highest good. Now, of course, we're also electrically charged. We have electricity, right? Energy, frequency. Haven't you had that experience where you touch a doorknob and pff, you get shocked? Because when you shuffle your feet on the carpet, these electrons are rubbing off the carpet onto your body. And then when you touch a metal doorknob, these electrons, when they jump off your body to the metal, next thing you know, spark, right? Or that rubbing a balloon on your hair. I used to love doing that, sticking it to the wall. Same thing. So all these things show us that we are energy. We are electric and we give off radiation. I mean, mostly infrared radiation, but it is that we're electromagnetic. There's this electromagnetic radiation within us. It's a very frequent, it's a very low frequency, right? So it's so that we can't even see it. It's lower than visible light. So it's not even visible. Now, some people can see it. So I, I'm, wor- I'm very much open to being wanting to, I really would love to start seeing energy of people because I have people that will come to me and they say, oh my gosh, I see you have this beautiful energy around you. And I'm like, I wouldn't see that. (laughs) So it's one of the things that I would love to begin working on and seeing that because I do have the clairvoyance. So I believe it's possible. It's always about believing it's possible, right? They say, believe in magic (laughs) and so it shall be. (sighs) Well, That's it for us today. I just wanted to share a lot more of how we are energy and how we can actually be conductors of energy. Oh, yes. Let me demo something for you. I have, let's see, I have a demo. Um, I have an energy stick, which this will only be for those on video. You can, of course, if you're on audio, you can watch this on YouTube. I'll, of course, explain it. This energy stick, it's really, um, it's a really cool little device and it's, it shows how I'm going to turn my body into a human conductor of energy. And what I love is that it's a great STEM learning toy for kids to explore the science of electricity as well. And how it works is it's got, it's like a little cylinder type looking toy, plastic toy. And it has little metal foils on the ends of it. And what happens is when you touch both of the metal foils on each end, it's going to make a a very, if you see it's loud, squeaky, not so great sound. And it has light. So if you notice that that's what happens with just me touching it. Of course, if I touch the plastic, nothing happens because that's not a conductor, right? So this right here just shows how we're energy. And what's cool about this is I actually remember when I had a little sister, when I was back working at uh, Qualcomm, I was a big sister. They had a whole program. It was super cool. I loved it. 
And we would go and do different experiments and go to different parts just for them to learn. They were uh, they were girls that were interested in science, right, STEM. And so one of the times we went into an ener- uh, an electric electricity circuit lab, and this was one of the devices, this toy they had, plus a light bulb. And they had 20 of us standing in a circle, all of us holding hands. And then two of the kids would be holding the ends of each of these. And through the, the instructor would say through that chain of all of us holding hands, we would break the chain between different people. So just un, like only two people would just stop holding hands. Everybody else was holding their hands and they were still touching this little energy stick. And so then they would show the kids how it was just how we are all energy and how energy and electricity flows through us. Super cool, right? And of course, it's like, yeah, we hear these things. And then when it's visible, especially for kids, it's just so cool watching it, the awe on their faces and really seeing them get excited. And a lot of them probably when you see something like that, I know as a kid, it would make me probably it would be it would have inspired me to say I want to learn more about this right so I love this kind of stuff for kids because it's cool little nifty toy you can look it up called energy stick and you can order it for your kids to just play with and you can get in a circle with your own family and friends and have these little fun experiments too right um I would note don't do this with your animals they feel it on another level I had that experience with my dog and he definitely felt it more than I did. So that was <laughs> just highly recommend. Don't use your animals. They are conductors too, and they feel energy on a whole nother level. So <sighs> that said, get electric, allow your life to really be in flow of frequency and learn how you can be in control of it and take your control over your life. So now for the practice area to integrate into your life, I would recommend that you set some kind of timer or alarm every couple of hours or so just to check in with yourself. Of course, some of the things that I mentioned throughout the episode really work great too. If you don't have it on your raise my vibe list from episode eight, our spirit is within our body, create that raise my vibe list. You can listen to that episode for more information. And on that list, you can have have things like write a gratitude list or what are some things that spark my joy? Because these are ways to raise your frequency, right? Act the doing an act of kindness for someone. And so That said, just check in with yourself and see where you're falling under that levels of consciousness every time your alarm or timer goes off. This is something I do regularly to create that awareness because we're so on autopilot. Even someone like me who's been doing so much work consciously, I'm still going to be go, go, go on autopilot. I'm not going to remember to let me see what time it is. So why not use these devices, these beautiful phone devices that we have, right? Take advantage of the the positive things of phone device, the phone, the phones. I know there's a lot of negative aspects and let's, I'm focusing on the positive and use your timer, use your alarm, have it go off every couple hours or so and do something off your raise my vibe list. Subscribe to not miss next week's episode with our next guest who's embraced life as a healing journey by balancing their mind, body, spirit. Thank you for listening to life as a healing journey podcast. You are here to peel and heal one layer at a time to live your life to the fullest in the face of any circumstance while embracing a life filled with love, joy, and peace. If you are in disharmony in any area of your life and truly desire to be in harmony and committed to elevating your health and well-being, I'm one click away. Find me at healingwithanushka.com. And remember, that's Anushka with a C. And if you like what you heard, please subscribe and share this podcast with your loved ones. 
Get your healing on. Until next time.